Right, so the new Sakamoto Days chapter just dropped this morning, and with the cliffhanger in the last chapter, 162, I don't think there's anybody out there that has a clue where this cliffhanger is going to go. So this is Sakamoto Days chapter 162. It's called Familiar Faces by Yuto Suzuki. On page one, we got Sakamoto running through this museum by himself down a bunch of stairs towards the underground special exhibitions vault. And he's thinking about finding a shortcut because it's taking forever to get down there. He begins to have a short flashback talking to Lu Wu-Tang. Wu-Tang tells Sakamoto that when he last fought X, he said that he had a different personality emerge from within him. And that that personality was an old friend, Akeo, that Sakamoto used to be friends with in the Order. Wu-Tang thinks that this probably has to do with X having some kind of multiple personality disorder. But that's only his guess. Sakamoto says that's starting to make a little sense because he's seen someone having multiple personalities before, but only in movies. Wu-Tang tells him, when a person experiences intense stress for long periods of time or repeated traumatic incidents, sometimes a separate personality forms to deal with the unbearable suffering. So that's why there's so much strangeness happening with Izuki. Izuki tells Nagumo, long time no see, and Nagumo's thinking to himself, that is so weird. Because Azuki never seemed like the kind of person to have such a strong sense of humor. But the impression that he's doing of him and Sakamoto's friend, Akeo, is so detailed. Azuki calls Nagumo's detection really lame. And he says, Here, you are the son of a famous spy family. And you can't even recognize an old friend. And Nagumo's heart just drops right into his feet. Because he's wondering, how could Slur's organization know that? That's only something that their old friend Akeo would know. Izuki looks around the special exhibition vault in the museum and says, So where's Sakamoto? He says, A little while back, I ran into him in Thailand, and... You know what? It's too much of a pain in the ass to explain, so he just stops right there. And Nagumo gets really surprised because Izuki changes subject, saying, Come to think of it, he got married and has a kid now. Is his wife cute? Who does the kid take after? And a fat bastard like Sakamoto actually finally lost his virginity. Nagumo realizes within his mind that these one-sided conversations with no tact whatsoever is exactly like Akeo used to do. It's almost like that it really is Akeo. The museum employee who led Nagumo down to this special exhibition vault yells at him to kill Rian Akeo within Uzuki. And the museum employee yells at Rian Akeo and says, What's with the relaxed small talk and what are you doing inside of Uzuki? He then screams at Akeo saying, you died back then, and I saw it. The Akeo personality within Azuki then says to the employee, Then kill me again. Why beat around it? The museum employee then yells back, I will kill you again, even if I have to kill your ghost this time. On the next page, Sakamoto comes in from out of nowhere, giving this hotel employee a leg drop right to the spine, knocking his ass right out. And Nagumo looks up to see where Sakamoto came from, a giant hole in the ceiling. Sakamoto then takes his foot off the hotel employee and says, Damn, I thought you were Azuki. The Akeo personality within Azuki says, Yo, what's up to Sakamoto? And Sakamoto says, Are you the Akeo version right now? And Nagumo's confused as hell as Sakamoto actually seems to have an idea of what the hell's going on here. Nagumo says that there's so much that he wants to ask Akeo, and he's wondering, what are you doing inside of Azuki, or are you actually the real Akeo? And the Akeo personality responds with, I'm like an Akeo created by the guy's memory. Nagumo says that he still doesn't get what the hell is happening, but Sakamoto thinks back to that conversation he had with Wu-Tang and remembers that sometimes a separate personality forms. When people experience intense stress for long periods of time or repeated traumatic incidents as a defense mechanism, to deal with unbearable suffering. The Akeo personality pulls out Nagumo's blade out of Azuki's chest and says, I was created to protect Azuki, so I can't kill him. So that is why that she had to call on Sakamoto to do this hit for her. And now it's starting to all make sense. When Nagumo told Sakamoto in his convenience store that there's a 1 billion yen bounty on Sakamoto's head, and he was confused, wondering, why would anybody put a 1 billion yen hit on my head when I'm retired? And Nagumo realizes that the Akeo personality is the one who put the bounty on Sakamoto's head. And that was all so that Sakamoto would kill Izuki 
because Rie and Akeo can't. She figured that Sakamoto would track down the source of this 1 billion yen hit right away and take care of it. But she had no idea that Sakamoto was retired out of the assassin game, got married, had a daughter, and then just became a lazy fat ass. And the Rie and Akeo personality realizes that Sakamoto won't be able to kill Izuki now because Sakamoto doesn't kill anybody anymore because he's not going to break his family code even if there is a 1 billion yen hit on his head. So that's why that the Akeo personality dragged Nagumo to this museum too as a backup plan in case Sakamoto flopped. And the Akeo personality tells Nagumo that she can't believe that he's such a moron he thought that the heart was on the wrong side of the chest even though he stabbed his sword right through his heart. Sakamoto and Nagumo both get really surprised that that's the case because that's completely unnatural and impossible. And just as Nagumo is about to elaborate on what he thinks is going on with Izuki's heart, the fire extinguisher system in the underground special exhibition vault of the museum goes off and starts filling the entire vault with gas. Nagumo says that something must have tripped off the security system. And the Rie Nakeo personality says she doesn't mind dying, but passing out would be a really big problem. So she's going to switch back to the Izuki personality. Sakamoto tells them both, it's alright, there's the hole that I came through so we can escape. On the next panel, we seem to see what looks like the surface of this museum again, and the floor begin to crack. And Sakamoto explodes through the museum floor, jumping through at least 50 stories, all the way from the museum's underground special exhibition vault. Nagumo and Akeo's personality are both stunned at Sakamoto's durability and his speed. And Akeo's personality and Nagumo both laugh in Sakamoto's face, joking about what a fat ass that he is. Sakamoto tells Akeo's personality that he has an idea. Why not just stay as Akeo forever? And Akeo's personality just looks at Sakamoto like he's completely gone crazy. The last panel of this chapter is really open for interpretation because we just see an emergency exit door creak open and that's all we get. Now my final thoughts are that this chapter was completely not what I was expecting and the cliffhanger for the last chapter when it just had a black background and it said Akeo with a question mark I thought it was for her niece Akira Akeo not her aunt Rian Akeo. And to be 100% honest, even though this wasn't the greatest chapter of Sakamoto days, it was actually kind of just chill, this is actually one of the more important ones because we get an answer on one of the most important mysteries in this entire manga, and that is the 1 billion yen bounty on Sakamoto's head. And the explanation that we got for this 1 billion yen bounty on Sakamoto's head was pure genius by Suzuki. Because he's definitely had this explanation up his sleeve for fucking years. There was one chapter where Rie and Akeo and a young Taro Sakamoto and a young Nagumo were all training together and Akeo would kick Sakamoto and Nagumo's ass in everything that they tried. Like both of them fighting her in a two on one for nine fucking straight hours and Sakamoto and Nagumo trying to outshoot Rian at the gun range only for her to end up breaking records and end up on the third place in the top 10 greatest shooters of all time. And that one time when all three of them tried to jump Kindaka, Sakamoto and Nagumo couldn't do shit to him and Rian was the only one that could actually throw him on the ropes. And after doing so many different assassinations together and so many different jobs with Sakamoto, she told him that even though she's much more skilled than him right now, if there ever was a bounty put on Sakamoto's head, it would definitely be over a billion yen. So even though I should have saw this coming, I didn't because of the way that Yuto Suzuki hid her personality within Uzuki's fragile, corrupted mind. And it actually makes a ton of sense why Uzuki would have Rian Akeo as one of the multiple personalities within him because she is literally one of the greatest assassins in the JAA, if not the greatest. So I understand now why chapter 162 was titled Familiar Faces, because we got a reunion of Ryo Akeo, at least her personality, Taro Sakamoto, and Nagumo for the first time in many years. So we'll see what happens in one week when Sakamoto Days picks back up. That's all for me. Peace.